Have you ever wondered how to have an almost limited amount of sheet music with you almost wherever you are that you can use whenever you need to? Even better to be able to easily organize it, easily find the pieces you want. And once you've found the piece, to be able to jump from point to point within that piece quickly and with ease? Well, I think I have the solution for you. So if you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. Welcome to Tommy's Piano Corner. I'm Tommy. This is a place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves playing the piano, to share tips and ideas about how to get best from this great hobby. In a previous video, I briefly mentioned an app that I use on my iPad that I downloaded almost when I first started to relearn the piano. This has helped me revolutionize the way I store and organize my music. In the previous video, which I've linked just here for you, I gave you a very, very brief introduction into that app. Today, though, I'd like to go into a lot more detail about it for you. I do understand that for many people, having a printed edition can't be beaten. Yet, even for those traditionalists amongst us, I'm sure that you'll find having a second digital copy is extremely useful. The app I use for my sheet music is called Fourscore. I was lucky enough when I downloaded it some years ago, it was still free. But these days it's only $9.99 and even at that price, I think it's incredible value for money. To be clear, I'm not being sponsored by Fourscore to make this video. I'm simply making it because I find that it's an app that's really, really useful and really, really great value to have. At its most basic, Fourscore is simply a PDF reader. That is to say, it's an application that allows you to load PDFs into it, and then you can view those PDF files, so portable document files, from within the app on your iPad. There are many other examples of good PDF readers. Even Apple's iBooks application, at its most basic, is a PDF reader. However, these weren't really made with the musician in mind. In the earlier video I made on the subject of using your iPad for practice, I did mention the app briefly, and the, the main features I introduced you to were those of being able to download files from the internet and store them within the app, so download sheet music. It was the ability then to be able to categorize that music, so to put in the composer's name, the name of the piece, the type of repertoire that it was, all kinds of things to help you organize it and find it more easily from within your iPad. You're also able to make notes on the scores that you've downloaded from within Fourscore. You can either use the Apple Pencil or you can just use the soft keyboard on the iPad to type notes in for yourself. You can also create set lists, so sort of playlists where you group together pieces of music for a particular purpose. I personally use the set list for grouping together the pieces of music that I'm currently practicing, so I can find them more easily when I want to each day. However, to be honest, all of these really basic things, you could probably work out a way to be able to do them with any PDF reader. You wouldn't need to invest in Fourscore. But Fourscore's got so much more to offer, and I'd like to introduce you to some of its more advanced features. Let's then have a look at three more advanced features built with the musician in mind. The first of these is iTunes Links. So what you're effectively able to do from within Fourscore is link any individual piece of music to one or even more files in your iTunes library. That means whilst you're looking at the score, you can listen to it played by one of your favourite musicians, you can pause it, you can fast forward, you can rewind, you can stop it, all from within Fourscore without ever needing to leave the app. You can even make notes on the score at the same time as you're listening to the music, which is extremely useful. I'll be honest with you, sometimes if I'm on a plane or if I'm somewhere like that, I get great pleasure from listening to music and actually reading through the score at the same time, just for the pure entertainment value. A next great feature is the ability to add bookmarks. 
So let's say you've downloaded Chopin's Preludes, the entire book of the Opus 28 Preludes. You don't need to then always go to that book within four score, open it and then scroll through to find the prelude that you need. You can actually set bookmarks yourself within four score and then each individual bookmark shows up as a separate piece within your music library. So you can go straight to prelude number one or prelude number two without needing to think about opening the book of preludes itself. The last one is the ability to actually put links within a piece of music. So I'm sure you've all experienced this in the past. You're playing a piece of music that has repeats or even what I used to dread, which is the DS Alcoda type markings where you have to go from the page you're at, you have to go two pages back to try and find where it starts from, and then you'll get to the code and you'll suddenly have to go three pages forwards in order to be able to finish the piece off. Well, luckily within Fourscore, you're able to actually put in the links that do this for you. So you effectively tell Fourscore the point from which you want to go back and where you want to go back to or where you want to go forward to. And then as you're playing through the music, you simply click on the link and Fourscore will take you to the correct page. And it even has a little flashing icon that shows you the point on that page that you're intended to start playing from. As if all of these great features weren't enough, let me give you some bonus features that come in handy every once in a while. The first of these is what they call the play piano. So you know if you're looking at a piece of music and sometimes you want to try and work out what it's going to sound like, so you'll take it to the piano and you'll just try a little bit of the melody to see what it is. Well, within Fourscore, you've got the ability to pop up a tiny little built-in keyboard that you're able to then play through the screen on your iPad, so you can just try and see what the music sounds like. If you want to be able to quickly take a copy of a score that you already own so that you can put it into Fourscore, then Fourscore is what is called a darkroom feature. Effectively, what this does is it enables you to use the built-in camera on your phone to actually scan the score and then to save it within Fourscore so you can access it later. And finally, in addition to be able to link files from your iTunes library, you can even record yourself playing and directly link that to the score in Fourscore. Of course, if you're using a built-in microphone, then it will be the built-in microphone that records. But if you've bought a microphone such as the Shure MV88 that I've told you about before, then you'd be able to use this microphone and that would control the sound when it was recorded into Fourscore. If you're a performing musician and you like to use your music with you when you perform, then Fourscore's got some great features in it that are ideal for that scenario. First, it has a built-in mode that it calls performance. So effectively, when you tell Fourscore that it's in performance mode, it will avoid popping up any of its editing windows or anything else if you inadvertently touch the wrong part of the screen when you're trying to change the page. Secondly, whilst turning digital pages is certainly simpler than turning pages in a book you know, you simply swipe the left or the right of the screen and the page will turn backwards or forwards for you. However, it doesn't need to stop there. The Fourscore app is actually compatible with Bluetooth page turners that you can use that effectively allow you to control the page turning with your foot rather than needing to use your hands so you can keep your hands totally free to concentrate on playing. I once actually saw a professional concert pianist when, as he entered the concert hall, as he sat down at the piano, he slipped something just underneath the piano on the floor and then put his iPad onto the music stand before he started to play. And I noticed as he was playing that he was actually using one of these Bluetooth page turners to turn the music in the score. I highly recommend that you download as much music onto your iPad as you possibly can. 
That way you can take the music with you wherever you go. And if you ever get an opportunity to play a piano somewhere, that opportunity won't be wasted for want of having some music with you. If you're not already, please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Don't forget to click the little bell icon too, so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.